Hey, everybody. Welcome to Big Dumb Monsters. I'm Nick. And I'm Chris. And this week, we're watching a George A. Romero classic. I mean, he doesn't have too many that aren't classics. A few. Yeah. Uh, Day of the Dead. Yes. Military industrial complex social commentary <laughs> movie. One of the core three Romero movies. The the trilogy, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Chris loves it. I think it's a good flick. Yeah, it's fine. Um, yeah, tons of nuance, dark film. I love it. Love it. Great gore. Greg Nicotero knocked it out of the park. Yeah, on it is pretty gnarly. Yeah. But anyway, we do that. We talk about a bunch of bullshit like we always do, and uh, we have a good time. So you have a good time. Watch Day of the Dead. Listen to the show. Big dumb monsters talking about Day of the Dead. Enjoy. It is Friday night. Friday night. It's fucking weird. Yeah. We're, we're all off. We're thrown off. It's fine. It's fine. I, like, I will say, like, not having the whole day to, like, prepare and, like, slowly amp myself up, like... Got you all fucked up? Yeah, it kind of does. It kind of does. Yeah. It's got um, me kind of hyped. Really? Not a lot. Yeah, because I was busy all day. I wasn't like, all right, I gotta wait. I gotta wait. I gotta wait. I gotta wait. It was like I was working, and then I was home for a little bit, and then... I'm here. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, while this is also still fresh in my brain, uh, before we forget, because this is something we were literally just talking about. Yeah. The porn title for this movie, <laughs> Day of the Head. Ooh. Lay yeah, of the yeah. Dead. Ooh, oh, Lay of the Dead. All right. All right. Yeah. 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 yeah I thought of it too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, any, 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 want to take a, a run at that? Man, uh, those are the two best, I think, right there. Uh, all I can think of was like Spray of the Dead. Oh, yeah. that's fucking gross. That works. <laughs> that it's the Golden spread. Showers special. <laughs> spread is also an option. Don't forget. Spread. Oh, Day of the Spread. Oh, Day of the Day Spread. Of yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that might be the winner. That all might right. Be the winner. Yeah. Day I'm of the Spread. <laughs> Anyway, that's gross. <laughs> uh, I like that we just started this off by just boom, getting right to the rock bottom. It's only it's only up from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Story of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. No. Uh, what's going on, everybody? We are we're talking uh, Day of the Dead. This is yeah. our fourth time into. No, this is our fifth. Uh, because we have we did the Tony T the Tony Todd remake of Night of the Living Dead. We did the original Night of the Living Dead. We did Dawn of the Dead. We did Land, Land of, the, of Dead. the Dead. So this is number this five. Is number five, yeah. This is the last of the the like the the core. Last of the ones I want to watch. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll we'll, we'll unfortunately get to those latter ones. <laughs> we'll do but it. But of the of the core like Romero movies. Yeah, of uh, the core three anyway, like the original three. Yeah, the remake wasn't, wasn't um, George, but I, I I can almost guarantee it had George's blessing. Oh yeah, I think one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we have differing opinions on where this one stands. It's way up there. Way it up is there. way up there. It is right behind Dawn of the Dead. Mm, not for me. Yeah, <laughs> not for me. This is this is Alien Aliens all over again. Yeah. And I will concede. Okay, yeah. Aliens. Is not a bad movie. It's just my least favorite of those movies. I want to. I love Day of the Dead a lot more than Dawn of the Dead, but Dawn of the Dead is fucking amazing. I have to give a shout out to one of our uh, podcasting, uh, you know, higher ups, uh, who's who I heard this on, uh, who heard said this the other day. 
uh, on Fat Man Beyond podcast. Mark Bernardin said uh, he's like a writer. If it was for, like Entertainment Weekly, he's written a bunch of comics, like mm-hmm. movies and TV shows. I think he did season two of Picard. Don't hold that against him. <laughs> um, he, he was talking about how he's explaining how Aliens is the greatest like action movie ever made. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Anyway. It's not the greatest alien franchise movie ever made. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's God. a wonderful action movie with aliens in it. I I will say, watching this today is the first time I've watched this movie in a very long time. Um, yeah, I do. I love this one. I I can't watch it a lot. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's because it's so intense. I think. Yeah, yeah, it is like it is. It did like get under my skin a little bit, like yeah, just with like the like the uh, the, the aggravation and the, just the tension. Um, so yeah, I can definitely see that. Yeah, <sighs> uh, but no, Dawn of the Dead is definitely still firmly my favorite of, of these movies. Dawn um, of the Dead, I'll give you, is probably the more entertaining movie. Where this one scratches a different itch. Uh, like I like this yeah. one because it's a it's a heavier tone it's darker the special effects are way better um, oh for sure i'll concede that yeah yeah, yeah. um it's the, just it's, mo- a, it's a different vibe most it's, of the zombies aren't blue so yeah no like, they yeah. go for more green in this one grayish yeah. green yeah <laughs> um no the thing like i think i think i like the most is that alligator yeah oh, sorry crocodile <laughs> i didn't see the nose you can tell by the nose yeah um well, they're in Florida, so what do they have in Florida? Alligators. So it's probably an alligator. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, the thing I think I, I like the most in the, in, this, in a good zombie movie is the breakdown, like the breakdown of society. Yeah. And I think that's why I don't hold this one as like in high regard as I do like Dawn of the Dead. Well, yeah, they're already broken down. Yeah, like Dawn of the Dead is like the very like last like grasp of like a firm society. Like it is yeah. just like they're about to just lose everything. Yeah, that's you're. Yeah, because you watch Night and then it's everything's starting. That's to get the weird. initial breakdown. Yeah, everything's starting to get weird, and then you have Dawn where everything has gone to shit. Yeah, but there's still like a there. There's hope. There's no hope in this fucking yeah, movie. Yeah, no, they're fucking done for. Yeah. That's another thing that really aggravated me about this movie is that, like, fucking Rhodes is so hellbent on this mission where, like, dude, look around. Yeah. Like, who gives a fuck, dude? Everything you should, like, you guys should be doing should be, like, growing food, maintaining and, like, strengthening the fences, and, like, just making sure you have water and anything else you need to live. Yeah, I th- well, because Rhodes is, a, like, he's a piece of shit, but he's kind of a complicated character. Because is he doing, like, the super soldier, I have to follow my orders thing, or is he, like, just so dedicated to, I'm in charge? Or, you I know, think, like, yeah. what is his deal? And you don't really get it through the whole movie but you know that he's driven by something it's not just like well whatever you know we're we're stuck in this situation let's make the best of it it's definitely not that yeah like there's there is something driving that character you just don't quite know what it is um well i think but it's, then he's a it's, hard ass yeah i think it's like just an underlying aggravation at the mission and like he's you know he's projecting that onto the fucking scientists yeah because like he even says like and he's not wrong like you guys have lost one person you know we've lost five yeah um like he's griping about like why are we going to get these things we're losing guys doing that yeah you know this you know the doctor's just chopping them up like yeah what's the point yeah exactly what are we getting out of this he's never gonna yeah. fucking you know get a cure like or whatever he's looking for right um so he's he's 100 percent not wrong there he's just going about it's, yeah, yeah the, like, the way he does it is yeah. is really shitty because he, he goes to this like extreme like um what i say is law basically yeah I, I think it's not it's not what it needed it's that like just that like insanity that starts setting in from being isolated well, yeah and being, yeah, yeah like yeah. they're they're all cracking like, yeah so i think i think what it is so like in dawn of the dead you have the the societal breakdown right you see the world starting to go to shit in this you see the people starting to go to shit 
Yeah. Because I think it just kind of transitions over into, like, you know, everybody that's left, they're just slowly losing their fucking minds because what else is going to happen? Yeah. Uh, which I like, and it, it lends to a, a just a more serious tone, a darker tone. And I got to tell you, like, Dawn of the Dead is so good, but there's too much comedy in it for me. Like, not yeah, not that it that. ruins the movie or makes the movie bad or anything, but, like, this is more what I want. Yeah, it's a completely different tone of a yeah. movie, yeah. Yeah, no, I, and I will never I will never disrespect Dawn of the Dead and, and say it's a bad movie or anything like that, but... Oh, pardon me. It just, it just has some moments that I question. You know, like, why is there a pie fight? You know, why is there goofy carnival music? Yeah. And I guess, you know, like, break the tension, whatever, levity... Those people sometimes need to cut loose, I suppose. But when you're doing a horror film, it can be too much. And I think in Dawn of the Dead's case, that was too much. Even like with those things, like I think Dawn pulls off that underlying sense of dread, like a little bit more that like I think you feel in the first movie, and I think you, you I think you feel it the most in Dawn. Of like, like the dread of the impending collapse again. It's the like the breakdown. Yeah, absolutely. Like I, I, you know, in in Night of the Living Dead, it's like all right, we got this. You know, <laughs> like all right, we we got this. Yeah. In Dawn, it's like uh, yeah. Do we, we get? I this? don't think we've got this. Yeah, yeah. And this, there's like you said, there's just no hope. There's just it's nothing. bleak. It's a very bleak film. Yeah. yeah. Also in in this movie, like the zombies aren't really the threat. Like they're no, here. It's each other. Yeah. They're here. They're a plot element. And they're executed well. Like I don't, I don't know that I want more zombie than I'm given in this. I think it's a good ratio of like human drama to monster drama. Yeah. Where Dawn of the Dead, you needed more zombies. Like that, that movie was driven by the fear of the zombies, and that was a major plot point, and that that executed that super well. This one, I just. I like that they pulled it back a little bit. Um, you know, give me give me the breakdown of the people. Yeah. And then and then give me some zombie action, you know, like yeah, it's give and take. Like there's 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 a push and a pull. Um I love watching him just absolutely fucking break down. What's his name? Sanchez? I fucking hate that character. Yeah, whatever the fuck. I really is. there's a lot of characters I just Yo, he's despicable. Hate. Yeah, like he's yeah. a fucking bitch, but you see that he's losing his grip on reality. Like, like it's not really his fault you just don't like him because you you, as humans we're drawn to people who are stronger we're not like i want to be just like that guy who's having a fucking mental breakdown yeah because he can't handle it yeah um no this scene like really frustrates the fuck out of me like yeah like everybody's just acting so fucking stupid oh yeah um Clearly, this guy cannot handle the fucking task he's being given, and like the other guys, just you know, the fucking leader there, Steel, is just being Steel. so fucking gung ho about like, no, we can't have the girl do it. Like, no, like, yeah, dude, again, look around. Yeah, fucking, you know, who gives a what's, fuck who's doing it? What's what's your option? Clearly, this guy can't fucking handle it, which it leads to fucking trouble. Yeah, uh, and this is the other thing. Why? Why do you have a cavern full of fucking zombies, like next to where you're living? It's nothing but a threat. Well, it's nothing but a threat. It is explained story-wise. What do they say? I think I missed it. Well, because they have them there because that's what they're using as their study crew. Oh, yeah, yeah. But still, like, why? Like, there's so fucking many of them in there. Like, it just makes no sense. And, to like, again, to not have somebody just once or twice a day walk the perimeter of the fence with a spear and just boom. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Boom. Like... I don't know. Ugh. There's there's also uh, there there were massive rewrites to this movie and and edits and things because like they didn't have the budget that they really like scripted for. Mm-hmm. And so they had to tone shit down by like half. Like um I want to say this is actually made for roughly half the amount of money that he was hoping to get. No shit. Yeah. That's a bummer. Yeah. Um, yeah, famously, like, there was, like, just, like, a giant, like, 
zombie army that they were going to have and like these big giant uh external shots and shit like that oh, man, they just that been cool if he made it a rated r movie he would have had it yeah but he didn't want to sacrifice so he made it an unrated movie for half the money which <sighs> fucking a george romero yeah he's punk as shit yeah but like they, i mean like that is a hard question of like does that cut into the quality of the movie like i respect to a, that to a degree Yes. Uh, yeah. He wasn't able to execute his vision completely. Yeah, I mean, like you're not going to get some of the gorier shots of like dudes getting ripped apart. But yeah. like I think we see that like, three times within like ten minutes in this movie. Yeah. And like, all right, like once is cool, all right, twice is still kind of cool. Now you're just getting repetitive on the fucking last one. Like, you know? Yeah. I don't know. But I love watching it because <laughs> it's so well done. Yeah, yeah, It's yeah. so well done. <laughs> but you, I mean, you've got minor shots that are super gory too, like all of the lab stuff. Um, you know the 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 dream sequence where he rolls over and his guts fall out, just like the, the oh, other zombie. Yeah. Uh, things like that. I don't think he would have been able to get away with on an R rating. There's a really cool shot. I think it's right after they first get trapped in the pen, where like in the cave with all the zombies. Yeah. Uh, where like they cut the head off of one of them like a, with a with a shovel. With the shovel, yeah. And like you see the head like on the ground upside down, and like it, the eyes blink as it's like sitting there, like yeah, because they didn't kill the brain; they just fucking sliced. Yeah, because fucking... yeah, you put the shovel spade in the mouth. And, yeah, and, so it's just yeah. yeah, the top of the mouth like up. Yeah, uh, yeah, it looks that's a really cool shot. Yeah, that's because Greg Nicotero is awesome. <laughs> Who is actually in the in movie, the movie too. Yeah, he's one of the soldiers. Yeah, pulling double duty. Probably wasn't paid twice. Oh, it's like Tom Savini. I mean, he did that in fucking yeah. Dawn of the Dead, you know? Sure did. He did that in Maniac as well. I'm pretty sure he killed himself in Maniac. Maniac. Maniac is cool. Yeah. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ, I can't remember the guy's name, but he was uh, the, the the main character there, the, the fucking Maniac. Uh, the, <laughs> the Maniac. T- titular Maniac. <laughs> Um, it was the same guy that played like the the lone shark in Rocky. You know, like, you it's know. been so long since I've seen Rocky. Oh man, the guy he pulls him into his Cadillac. He says, "Hey, if I, if I ask you to break a guy's thumbs, you know, you're supposed to break his thumbs." Yeah, yeah, it's legit. Probably been at least ten or fifteen. That is way years. too fucking long. Yeah, since I've seen Rocky. What are you doing with your life? <laughs> Watching other stuff. I, I watched that movie a lot when I was a kid because it was on HBO a lot. Yeah. Um. So I, I don't know. I just it was on regular cable too. You bougie fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, when you're watching it on cable, you probably don't get the line. Take her to the zoo. Retards like the zoo. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Art? Nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. Uh huh. That's a that's a deep cut joke from our youth. Uh, I don't know. I just I I vibe with this movie more than I vibe with Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. And, and again, to take absolutely nothing away from that movie because it's a fucking masterpiece. Yeah. And a classic. No, no, again, not, I'm just saying, and, not to take anything away from this movie. I just this is just like in my you know of this buffet of awesome zombie movies yeah. like. This is the mashed potatoes to the fucking like you know hand carved prime rib. I, s- I see this. I see this as like this is like the temple of doom of the Romero verse. You know what I mean? All right. It's you know kind of the underdog. It's a lot darker. Uh, not as many people respect it. Like, yeah. The way they do the other ones. Yeah. But um, the other thing that really fucking gets on my nerves is like. I do not like the smart zombie, like, uh, in any zombie movie. Like, I don't, like, I, that is yeah. just, you know, like, people just, there are people who don't like fast zombies. Yeah. I don't like smart yeah. zombies. I am one of those, I don't like s- fast zombies people. Yeah. Like, I don't know, that just, it's something that I don't, I don't jive with. And, and I, I think, think it's it because be I saw, I had slow zombies for so long, like, that's just what a zombie Excuse me. That's what a zombie is for me. Yeah. And then when it's oh, it's a virus, and then they run really fucking fast. It's like, meh. I I get what yeah, you're doing. Yeah. Like Twenty eight days later, zombie. Like yeah. That, you know that's not your traditional zombie, but I think like the Zack Snyder fast zombie is a good fast zombie example. 
Yeah. Like in, in the Dawn of the Dead remake and in we can do the Dawn of the Dead remake. We can, we can uh, fucking, I didn't even think of that. We can do the Day of the Dead remake. No, no we cannot. <laughs> I haven't seen it. Have you seen it? Yeah. Oh, boy. It is uh, not good. Uh, not good. I don't. I don't want to see it. Yeah, no. Uh, but no, I think like both Dawn of the Dead and Army of the Dead, I think those are good examples of fast zombies. You know, Army of the Dead act, pulled it off really well. I, there was something about that Dawn of the Dead remake that just bugged the shit out of me, and I can never, oh, really? I can never put my finger on it. Man, I think like I mean, I did I enjoy might, it. I might have to give it a rewatch because I saw it when it was new, and it just kind of was pissed me off for whatever reason i think like the experience that i had when i watched it for the first time in the theater was also like contributing to how much i do enjoy that movie yeah it was that came out in like 2000 2002 maybe yeah like one or two yeah it was still in college definitely because i went to visit evil geeks nick at his college in oswego yeah uh it was like a fucking blizzard so we just like it, the the theater was a couple doors down from where he lived. So we just like got food, fucking in the middle of this blizzard, walked up and watched fucking Dawn of the Dead. Like that's chill. That was pretty. Like, we were you know, yeah. pissed, fucking drunk. Yeah. Um. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That you know, awesome experience. But I, again, I I do enjoy that movie. Yeah. I don't know. It's just like I said. I'll have to give it a rewatch because I like when it first hit DVD. <sighs> I think my dad bought it or something like that because I mean he was a big fan of. Dawn of the Dead too. Yeah, um, I love that scene with the fucking Richard Cheese uh, version of Down with the Sickness. <laughs> God, I love it. <laughs> it's so wild. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> uh, back to Day of the Dead. What else is there to say about this? Um, uh, well, well, before I can... we, I was gonna say, before we do that, anything good going on in chat? I see some uh, some uh, chatters. Welker Wonder Hour is. Oh, what's uh, going on, guys? Loved the 28 Days in Day of the Dead remake only for the fat zombies. Okay. <clears throat> see, like, the, the the 28 Days Later zombie, like, I do like that movie, but I can see how, like, your yeah. zombie fundamentalists aren't going to enjoy that. Because they're not technically zombies. They're not the dead. They're yeah. just these infected humans. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was really against that movie when it came out. I still don't really enjoy it, but now I can look at it from like an outside perspective and go, okay, this is a, a well-made, you know, like really kind of scary movie, you know? Yeah. Like it's, just, just, I, I, it's just not for me. I think that... I thought for sure that'd be a little bit more up your alley with the whole, like, again, like the, the ending of that movie with the tension between the soldiers and them, which is like increasing yeah. and fucking, you know? I'll, I'll, again, I'll have to give it another watch because I saw it when I was younger and a little more like... If it's not what I want, then I don't like it. Yeah. Kind of personality, which I think a lot of us have when we're younger. Yeah. Right? The the older you get, the more accepting of other things you get. Um. So maybe I won't be such a fucking chode about it. <laughs> uh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Art. Uh, but the Fra thanks to the Frank Welker guys for coming by too. Yeah. Um. Anything else going on? Uh, just my wife chiming in on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks the fast zombies are good for jump scares. Not. Not wrong. Yeah, that's true. I just think that fast zombies slash rage zombies should be considered a separate type of monster yeah. from regular zombies and evaluated on a different scale. Yeah, the yeah. zombies are the you know the living dead, like the Walking Slow, Dead. Fucking, yeah. Unless you go unless you go back to voodoo zombies. But yeah, that's more of like the human like under you know human under the influence. Well, that's, yeah, that's closer to twenty eight days later zombie than like it's true. You know, uh, what we think of as, like, a typical zombie. Yeah, I mean, like, this... Uh, like, Romero, I I believe, kind of invented the whole fucking thing. Pretty sure. I Well, people say Carnival of Souls, but, like, I don't I don't agree with that. Like, that's, that's a completely different movie. Yeah. Like, yeah. Nobody dances in Night of the Living Dead. That's all I'll say about that. <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. I really like Bub. I know you're not you're not a fan of the smart, zombie, smart zombies, but you see him as a part of an evolution. Like it's not just like oh he's brilliant. Like you see he's dumb as shit. He's just kind of flashing back some memories that he had and acting on those. Yeah, still I don't want it. Like you should like I yeah they're dead. 
like they're just they're driven by instinct and that's it. There's no memory. There's no like teaching it anything. It's just a fucking. But that's like it's it's only it's just, like he even says like you that's know so linear though like and I get it. But don't you want something that's just like a little different? Like it's a no, little different. Not in this case. Why? I don't know. I can't explain why. I just don't want your teachable smart zombie. Like again, call me a zombie fundamentalist, but yeah. like it's a zombie should be a dead fucking human. Like there's just again, there's no reasoning with it. There's no teaching it. It just needs to eat something. Like, yeah. you know, that's all. You know, like even Return of the Living Dead, like those are smarter zombies. They can talk, but that's more like they even say like why do you eat to, for the kill the pain? Like it just yeah. kills the pain. Yeah. Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell me you don't think Shaun of the Dead is a zombie movie because they can be taught? Oh, fuck. He didn't say he doesn't believe that they're zombie movies. Fuck. He said he doesn't like them. Fuck. Now so I've painted like myself in dead. <laughs> fuck you, fuck you, uh, fuck you. Them to play video games. I end this argument now. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> now, that was my last night of the show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> It was a pleasure working with you all. You show up next week. What's that smell? It's just like a fucking rotting corpse. Oh. You're about to become scenery, bitch. If that's not a quote from something, it needs to be a quote. I don't know. Closest I got is Welcome to Primetime, bitch. Name it. Name the movie. Arthur. Is it The Running Man? No, no. it's not The Running oh, God, I'm so disappointed in the two of you. I don't know. God damn it. It's one of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies where he uh, grabs the girl, uh, smashes uh, her into the TV. The it's the third one, yeah. yeah it's yeah. the third one, yeah. See, now I've got to watch those all again. Yeah. I mean, yeah, annually you should. You I know? had that Pretty again. on. Get your prostate checked, watch Nightmare on Elm Street. And, like, it's... Kind of goes hand in hand. I had that on VHS, like, secretly when I was a kid. I recorded it on HBO <laughs> one night, like, Labeled it something else. <laughs> I am not supposed to be watching this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, God titties in this. Let me just... Uh, uh-huh. Just a couple. Just yeah. a couple. <laughs> I mean, Nightmare on Elm Street was usually pretty good for excessive violence and a mild amount of titty. Yeah. Friday the 13th, on the other hand. Just, yeah. Just tits, tits, tits. Tits and gore. <laughs> Isn't that the background? Tits, tits, tits. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be our next neon <laughs> <laughs> live nudes. <laughs> Nobody wants live nudes. Anyone on this show? <laughs> nope. Nope. Nobody wants that. Unless we start. Unless we start hiring dancers. That's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, not a bad idea. I am not opposed. You want to trouble those numbers? Yeah. <laughs> we'll work on trade i don't know we'll figure it out yeah we'll have we'll have great streaming numbers and divorce papers yeah. awesome <laughs> which we can pay for because we've got way better streaming numbers <laughs> uh jesus christ yeah, he's got no place here <laughs> left the chat no. <laughs> I like these guys. I hate that uh, what I'm assuming is a fake Jamaican accent. It has to be. Or he is the worst Jamaican ever. <laughs> Some sort of Caribbean. That's so bad. Steel looks so much like John Goodman. Like I really wish yeah. it was John Goodman. <laughs> you know, but John Goodman didn't look like that then. But he could have been like that intense, like, you know. Oh shit, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that would be good. That would be some dream casting. John Goodman is steel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And the, the fake Dudley Moore would be real Dudley Moore. <laughs> what else? Ooh, who else would we cast in this movie? Ooh. What about the doctor? Who would you cast as the doctor? Because I, be he's like, cast pretty well as it is. He is, but I want somebody who's gonna fucking really like chew the scenery and be like awesome at it. Um, I mean, at, now perspective at the same year, you've got Jeffrey Combs doing Reanimator. 
He would be awesome. You know, this is going to be like kind of odd. Like, I think if we're dream casting, I like, like I like an older guy in that role though. Christopher Lloyd. Ooh. Right. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Because he could like, I think he'd really pull off the like the manic. Yeah, like the this is all scientific, and then like once every now and again, let that out. Like, no, this guy's going fucking crazy. Like, yeah. 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 That's not bad. That's yeah. Not bad. I'm trying to think of who's like an older guy at this time. Is eighty five. I, I I say go cra- like a, yeah. dream like cast the person at their any age like okay. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah yeah. Like this dude <laughs> like Rhodes? Nathan Fillion. Nathan Fillion. Mm, no. Oh, no, dude. I don't see Nathan. I don't see Nathan Fillion as that. He, Nathan Fillion's got too much charm. He it would very lose. rarely a bad guy, but when he is a bad guy, fucking awesome. When has he ever been a bad guy? He's a bad guy on Buffy. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. He was like the uh, like the second, not the big bad, but like you know the uh, the mini boss. No shit. of the season. Yeah, yeah. All right. Is he like a priest? Yes. Yeah, yeah he's the dude who uh, pokes out Xander's eye. Oh, yeah. Cool. That's who would I want as Rhodes? Um. God damn, that's a tough one. Because I mean, like this guy does it really well. Like nobody, is, nobody in this movie is bad in their role. It's not. Oh, that's yeah, not yeah, why yeah, we're no. like recasting it. But like, who would be great as that? Christopher Walken, maybe. Before he got like really fucking crazy, like like Deer Hunter, like Christopher Deer Hunter. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Or like, or like Young De Niro. Young De Niro would be pretty fucking good. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Oh man. Yeah. That has some taxi driver De Niro vibes right there. Yeah. See, I think I th- still think Nathan Fillion because like he'd be a much more likable character. I don't want him likable. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want him likable. Um, oh man. Yeah, that's super Who good. Who I want as the little squirrely, like drunk Irish guy. I mean, oh the, uh, yeah i mean who would be yeah, the tech guy yeah instead of like the jokey dudley moore oh yeah we did pick dudley moore for him yeah but you could i mean you could do way fucking better no i'd like to see that that'd be cool i mean that'd be neat how about sean connery like an older sean connery like highlander years <sighs> he no because he'd still be like he'd still be like you just you know he'd still be like physically commanding like he's still a big dude like oh oh you're thinking like the character needs to be small yeah yeah like okay. a little dude all right all right i see what you're saying so like a tom cruise <laughs> <laughs> like real small <laughs> <laughs> like a scrawny dude uh, yeah fucking tom cruise is you know he's got a fire hydrant yeah he's, he's a thicky five feet tall and fucking five feet wide yeah <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. I don't know. I really could have done without this character, the the second. He is kind of the second scientist. And I mean, literally, like, he's literally, yeah. Yeah. He's like, just done out. But I guess, I guess they need him to be there to show how crazy Rhodes is without getting rid of a main character. See, that is, like, typically reserved for, like, the like second in command henchman like in an action movie like yeah the henchman who gets killed to show how crazy the head like the head bad guy really is yeah i'll kill my own guy exactly yeah. like bob and the and batman and the, you know by the joker like yeah bob gun <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh anyway we should fucking rate this movie we've been rambling a while about this that's fine it's fine. Um, it's good rambling. Yeah, no, it, it's yeah. good. It's, it's good stuff to you know unpack here. Um, all right, I'll go first. Um, let's go with the year eight five. Nice. Yeah. All right. I thought you were gonna go higher than that for sure. Uh, no. I mean, like, I think eight five is fair. Like, if if I'm going, like, I mean, I give the extra system ten because like that's that's in my DNA. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I can't. I couldn't possibly give that anything less than a 10. But I'm going to be realistic here. Like, it's an 8.5. I 
I don't think I gave Dawn a 10. I think I went high, though. I think I went like I 9 you, or 9.5. I think you went 9-something, yeah. Um, I, I think I was in the 7s. Yeah, I do really, really enjoy this movie, especially like rewatching it today. Like I definitely appreciate it a lot more. Yeah. Um, but, like I, I do appreciate like the tension, the slow build. Um, uh, there we go. Jesus. Um, I don't know, but for for me, for what I'm looking for in a zombie movie, like it doesn't scratch like the itch. Like I, 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 I get that it's something different. Um, I don't know, but it just doesn't like it doesn't hit hard enough for me. Did you like, want more zombies? Is that I think it maybe? So I I don't know. Like I do think like that this story, like there are in like enough zombies because like where else would you put more zombies in this movie? Yeah. You know? Um I mean they're just they're always there. They're just a presence there the whole movie. Yeah. So it's not like you know, you could have them more like integrated into the story. They're just there. Um Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um so for me, like I'm gonna go I think I'm still gonna go high on this. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it an eight for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I do really, really like this movie, um, but for me, like, no, Dawn of the Dead, like, all the way. Yeah. I. And again, I, not to take anything away from this. Yeah, I want to say like, Romero was always setting the trend. So think about it like this: so there weren't really like, zo- quote unquote, zombie movies before Night of the Living Dead. Not the way we know them now. Yeah. And then after that, you would start getting more. And then he does Dawn of the Dead, right? So then you start getting some more intense movies. Like you get, you know, your Italian zombie movies that are kind of copying, presenting themselves as sequels to to things that he's already made, um, kind of in the same vein. Um, And then he makes this one, which is more, you know, what is the zombie plague doing to the people? And then you start getting more movies like that. And then like, he's always like just, just ahead of the curve. Yeah. I think is what it is. And this Even one, with, like land of the dead, like, you know, within like, I think five years of that, you get fucking, you know, the walking dead, which is like yeah. almost the same, like a similar type of thing where yep. it's like, you know, this, you know, the long term story of the survivors. Yeah. So what has happened after society has completely crumbled. Yeah, yeah. 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 What a fucking legacy that guy's got. For real, man. Jesus Christ. Like, it's almost a shame that, like, the later zombie movies didn't do... Because, like, I think at that point, he isn't on the cutting edge anymore. Like, especially with, like, Diary of the Dead. Like, it's like a found footage movie. He's behind the curb at that point. Like Yeah. The curve, sorry. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, do we have other like found footage zombie movies? Well, found footage horror is already a thing at that well, point. Sure. Like he's just adding another entry into that genre. Yeah. Instead of like doing something new with it basically, like Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, so it's not like a like I said I haven't re- I haven't seen any of them past Land of the Dead. Is there anything in them that like kind of changes the axis of the of the zombie movie? Other than adding a found footage element to it? Not really. I forget what the other one is called. There's Diary of the Dead. Survival of the Dead. Um, Survival of the Dead, mainly I remember it being like a family feud story, basically. Like, there's two. Oh, kind of going back to the night? Like, no, it's just two families like living on an island that there's like, they just, these two families don't get along. And then like, there's just also zombies. Like, it's barely a fucking zombie movie. No. It's a, it was I, I've only seen it like once and I just did not like it at all. Yeah, Diary of the Dead. I did like I, I remember liking it. I, th- I still have only seen it maybe like once, maybe twice. Uh, but I remember liking it a lot more than Survival of the Dead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, are you ready for some trivia? I am ready for some trivia. I'm still gonna get that soundbite back in the show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very I've been putting it in the audio. Okay, okay. Uh, right. That works. I think. Like, sure. I, I don't remember, but whatever. Yeah. I, I believe you. I think. <laughs> Listen, I might be half in the bag every time I edit <laughs> the podcast, okay? So cut me some fucking slack, would you please? <laughs> Let me crack this beer before we get into trivia. This 
delicious Utica Club beer. Refreshing. Uh, it's just you know a good time in a bottle. Uh, again, if you guys wanted to, absolutely sponsor us. Delightful. We yeah. would love a beer sponsorship. Yeah. If anybody out there knows anybody at Utica Club Beer, fine, fine Utica Club Beer. Wait, there we go. Two X Pure, baby. <laughs> First beer sold after Prohibition, and probably during. Uh, definitely during. <laughs> Uh, was it? Uh, it's currently brewed through Saranac. Is it really? I think so. I do not enjoy Saranac beer. They're fine. They're fine. Well, they, if they make you a club, they make a great beer. I think somebody described it as uh, tastes like bug spray. <laughs> <laughs> it's not inaccurate. <laughs> okay, on to the trivia. Not to bother you with trivia. I used to think they were kind of trivia. <clears throat> All the extras who portrayed zombies in the climax <laughs> received <laughs> for their service a cap that said, I played a zombie in Day of the Dead, a copy of the newspaper from the beginning of the film, the one that says The Dead Walk, and one dollar. <laughs> they didn't even get the donut, like the people of the- Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> All of that shit is worth it, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we got to see if we can get our hands on one of those hats. <laughs> oh, what was the name of the restaurant? Uh, oh, Jesus. Uh, steak something or? Oh, in, in the fucking. Uh, in Dawn of the in Dead. In Dawn of the Dead. Ooh. The steakery. The steakery. Yeah. The yeah, yeah. <laughs> they didn't even get to go to the steakery. <laughs> it wasn't the steakery. It's like something steakery. Yeah. Fuck. It's like we've got a research guy. Over yeah, here. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the underground facility was not a soundstage. It was shot in the Wampum Mine, a former limestone mine near Pittsburgh that has been used for an underground storage facility. Uh, the 2.5 million square foot mine Holy is shit. now... Uh, operated as the Gateway Commerce Center and referred to as the Surface Storage Facility. <laughs> That's absurd. Jesus. Uh, right after Logan tells the zombie that it needs to sit in the dark and think about what it did and punishes it by turning off the light, a little bit of the gonk music from Dawn of the Dead uh, can be heard in the transition scene. That's like the dumbest part of this movie for me. It's like, <laughs> why are you playing throwback music? Yeah, yeah. Like, I had an ass full of carnival music Clark in the in Dawn of the Dead. I don't need it in Day of the Dead. Uh, there was a, another callback to uh, Dawn of the Dead. He calls all uh, the moles are closed. <laughs> yeah, there was. A, he calls the one guy Flyboy too. Oh, does he? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> uh, let's see. During a vacation. Uh, break in filming makeup artist Greg Nicotero used the realistic and gruesome model of his own head uh, to play a practical joke on his mother <laughs> which I imagine that poor woman yeah. has been tortured probably not the first or last time he'd done that to her like no <laughs> god damn it Greg <laughs> Greg Nicotero mother torturing piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> Probably a really nice guy. Though, he's probably, he's yeah. probably a sweetheart. He <laughs> seems like the coolest dude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, during Miguel's sedation, Lori Cardiel told Anthony DeLeo Jr. to actually slap her to make it look more authentic. Oh, he went to town, man. He did. Now, <laughs> can you imagine if he was just like, all right, and then just wallop the shit out? <laughs> <laughs> like, be cool. <laughs> <laughs> like he really he really decked her with that slap, but imagine if he put a lot into it, you know? <laughs> like wound up like, <laughs> <laughs> like fingers touched the fucking floor first. Started as they say like in Alabama, like it came up through the Carolinas, like I think it's an Eddie Murphy joke. <laughs> Alright, that might be Steve Harvey. I, I remember who forgot who said I don't it. No. <laughs> Danny Ayello punch you in your mouth, Eddie. <laughs> You ever get your ass kicked in the twisted suit, Eddie? <laughs> hey! <laughs> God damn it. 
Uh, oh, buddy. Uh, the budget for George A. Romero's original script was estimated at $7 million, uh, but he would only be given the money if he could film an R-rated film. He was told that if he wanted to go ahead and shoot an unrated film with no limits on gore, the budget would be split in half to 3.5. And this is impressive for $3.5 million. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, I don't know, like, I, I as... I, I did express uh, uh, I, did that. I did express frustration at George Romero for not like lowering the movie to the R. But you know what? Fuck them producers for not fucking yeah. giving him the full budget on it's that. It's like, like you saw what he did yeah. in two previous movies. Give the man his fucking money. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like let him let him fucking go nuts, man. But this was the last time he ever like sought studio money. Like his, his, this whole situation soured him so much on studios. He was just like, "Fuck it, I'll raise the money on my own for everything else I make." Yeah, and we're done here. Yeah, just make the movie I want to make. Yeah. Uh, wow, Tony Todd auditioned for the role of John. He would later play the lead role in Night of the Living Dead in 1990, a uh, color remake of the first uh, movie in the Dead series. All right, I don't. Yeah, I mean, he could have done it. Yeah, he could have done it. Awesome. He could have done it great. Um, would he have pulled off the fake stupid accent? <laughs> would he? <laughs> I hope not. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, one of the makeup technicians criticized the manager's choice to play Michael Jackson's Thriller on set. If you look closely, there is a zombie dressed like Michael Jackson because of this. Oh, my God. Oh, there's another hidden object in this fucking movie, and I have never seen it, but now I'm going to look for it every fucking time. Oh, God. I'll get to it, and you're going to love it. Um, all above-ground scenes were filmed at several locations around Florida. No makeup required. Uh, <laughs> George Romero was living at the time. That uh, explains that, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's, that looks like Florida. Yeah. That looks like the people who are in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> they they have leprosy now. God knows why. Yeah, leprosy is just... You just get it in Florida for some reason. They don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your Florida driver's That's license. That's not a joke either. That's real. Here's your Florida driver's license. Here's your leprosy. <laughs> Watch out for the meth heads. Uh, British band Gorillaz have sampled several audio clips from both Dawn of the Dead. Fuck yeah, man. Uh, and Day of the Dead. Yeah, yeah, I love uh, that song. Portions of the music and some dialogue uh, from the latter feature are in the track M1A1 yeah. on their 2001 debut album. And some of Bub the Zombie's grunts appear alongside sound clips of the news reporters from Dawn of the Dead on one of their B-sides, Hip Albatross. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, furthermore, part of the score from Dawn of the Dead is used in the intro track to the 2005 album, Demon Days. Ooh. So, they like they like Romero movies. Yeah. Well, he. Damon Albarn does anyway, yeah. yeah. He definitely <laughs> does. No, like, he's like the main creative force behind all that. Like, and the artist, I, I'm blanking on his name. Oh, but the guy that Jamie drew all the, Howlett. Yeah, the tank girl guy. Yeah. What does he do? Just like bring in like studio musicians for all the other shit? Like, yeah, it's been like a rotating group of people. Yeah, so there's no like gorillas band. It's just whoever he can get in the studio. E, I think so. I, I like. I don't know if it's because he's difficult to work with or whatever, but like, yeah. or if that was the point of the project. Maybe. Yeah, I know. Like, I think on the first album, fucking. Uh, what's their names? The Talking Heads are like two of the people on it. Tina Weymouth and fucking her husband. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, and the other one was like Del the Funky Homo Sapien. Yeah. Uh, and then there's like one more. Dan the Automator, I think. And I think he was like, like he was like the second kind of like, next to Damon Albarn, like was like also like very influential and in like where that went. Like when he left, that's when things like, I think it was after Demon Day. So that's like when you get Demon Days to, like, Plastic Beach. Yeah. And, like, it's kind of a weird, like, shift in sound. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I like Demon Days, but, man, that, that first album just, like, did it for me. Yeah, that, that is an amazing album. Like, I think De both those albums are really good. Like, 
or I mean, like listening wise, you can just put in that first album and listen to the whole thing, like yeah. front to back. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, like, artistically, fucking Demon Days is like amazing. Like I think it's the better album. Yeah, I mean, well, it's it's a Demon Days is more of an experience. I think is is the the phrasing that I would use where yeah. the the self titled or uh, first album was just a better musical experience. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, yeah. Like, it's, it's, I think the songs are structured better in the, on the first album. And then, like, don't get me wrong, there's awesome fucking songs on Demon Days. But then there's just, like, weird shit. Like, spoken word poetry over some beats, you know? Like, Dennis Hopper reading, Dennis a, Hopper. Story, reading yeah. a story, yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, so, like, I think on the on Plastic Beach, I think you get, like, one of the dudes from the Sex Pistols, I think, and one of the dudes from the Clash. Like Paul Simonon and fucking is it Mick Jones? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Well, Mick Jones and uh, why am I blanking on his fucking name? The 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 fucking singer from the Sex Pistols, Johnny Rotten. Yeah, yeah. They're the only two that like anybody gives a shit about yeah, right yeah. now. Anyway, so like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, why did it take me so long to come up with that? Yeah, I don't why know. Why did it take me so long Jesus to come up Christ, with that? Jesus Christ, it's like there's a chemical imbalance in yeah. my brain right now. Um, you, Ike Turner on that album, too. <laughs> <laughs> Is it the sound of the back of his hand? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, rest well. in peace, Tina Turner. <laughs> um... Yeah, no, I I do love gorillas though. Fuck, I they're love fun. That like yeah. it's it's a it's a it's a cool like break from like normal music. I yeah. guess. Yeah, like yeah. weird poppy Japanese like kind of. Fucking... Don't don't even try. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just throw any genre in there, and you'll yeah. you'll hit. You'll There's hit something. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get back to trivia here. Um, <clears throat> uh, George Romero held a great appreciation. For the talent community in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh, and utilized the same casting agency he used for Dawn of the Dead. Uh, he specifically requested that all extras previously contracted for Dawn of the Dead be called back for casting in Day of the Dead, which is why many of the zombies that appear in this film may look familiar. This is also how Joseph Pilato, who appeared only briefly in a pre previous film, got his part in the main cast. Yeah, there's a lot of crossover between the two movies as I... Uh discovered as i was doing the research yep uh going back to joseph Pilato, uh his line choke on them as he's being ripped apart by zombies was an ad lib uh by the actor which is amazing that like an ad lib line became iconic <laughs> like that's one of my favorite moments in this movie where he's being torn apart and he's just telling the zombies choke, choke on his guts like <laughs> how spiteful are you like <laughs> That's insane. Um, let's see. In the in the last work of Romero, the book The Living Dead, it is revealed that the three survivors from the Day of the Dead did not survive and became zombies on the island. So I don't know what The Living Dead is. Like, is that like a a novel that he wrote, or is it just like yeah. musings that he had? I yeah. don't know. I'm gonna have to look into that. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, and this is going to be our last trivia fact for the night here. If one looks closely at Rhodes as he's in, being torn in half, they'll see that a large section of his innards is a blood-covered rubber chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, is that I can't, I can't wait. That's it for the trivia. I yeah. cannot wait for that scene to come up again. Oh, it's the so hidden object you've been Fucking look, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh look salem's lot salem's lot <laughs> uh all right on to the better known as yeah i know you i knew i knew you i knew i knew you but you ain't you all right we will start off with director george a romero cool. who we have actually started uh started who we have actually talked about before. Previously. Uh, yeah, again, as we have done uh, Night of the Living Dead as our episode 100. It's hard to believe that was six, 17 episodes ago already. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, right? It's like your ceiling growled. Yeah. Um, and we also did Dawn of the Dead. Um, uh, oh, there's the uh, shot of the zombies uh, fucking eating guts from the original one. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, again, we've talked about them to this really... Oh, we did Land of the Dead also. Jesus. Yeah. Um, really not much else to talk about. I mean, you know... We're familiar with him at this point. If you're a horror fan, yeah, the man's a visionary. Familiar. Yeah, he is. You know, one of the greats. Um, so we're just gonna move. Right. I still haven't seen Monkey Shines. I've never seen that movie. I may have. Yeah. Like a million years ago. I, that was that was one of those ones I always saw on the shelf. I just rewatched the remake of the Crazies a couple weeks ago. That's a really good movie. Was it? Yeah, I do enjoy that. Um. It, um oh, who was in that one? Uh, Timothy Oliphant. Yeah. That's what um, I don't think there's anybody else really like notable. Uh, so we're gonna move right on. Lori Cardiel, uh, who played Sarah in this movie, um, still in stuff. Has three things coming out. Um, nothing really, you know, notable. Yeah. Um, she was on a TV series in 2016, Doomsday, just an episode. Yeah, I saw that, and I was like, oh, was that the movie, Doomsday? No. No. It wasn't. It was not. Uh, Iron City Ass Kickers in 2021. That's a weird... Why are these dates all out of order? That's weird. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, she was in an episode of Tales from the Dark Side, 1986. That Uh, was George Romero's, like... Like his Twilight anthology yeah, series, right? yeah, like Tales from the Crypt, basically, without like the Crypt Keeper. Yeah, and it was him and him and Stephen King did Creep Show, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I remember just the beginning of that show, like seeing the intro would freak me out when I was a kid. Oh, so Tales like, from the Dark Side. Yeah, because I knew it'd be a scary thing yeah. coming on. Like, yeah, yeah. The scary uh, door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tales from the Dark Side. Um, a lot of people in this were in the Equalizer, at least for an episode or so. Uh, she was in one episode, 1985. Hmm. Uh, her first role, 1975, in the soap opera Ryan's Hope. Uh, moving on, Terry Alexander, who played John in this movie. Uh, has been in some movies, still in stuff. Has two things coming out. Romero's Elegy. Uh, it's a voice in that. So I'm wondering if that's like a documentary or maybe something animated. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Um, anything worth noting? It's an episode of Law and Order SVU. Uh, six episodes of a TV series called Deadline. Uh, an episode of Original Flavor Law and Order in 1999. Oh yeah. Uh, still have never seen a single episode of any Law and Order series. I like the original. Yeah. Like once they got into like you know, this is all rape crimes. It's like, I <laughs> the, the Lost Dave interest. Chappelle joke. The, the fucking this is pussy juice. Fucking <laughs> iced tea. Like is investigating like <laughs> sexual crimes. This is this substance that is slippery? <laughs> the taste is this is pussy juice. <laughs> John yeah. Mulaney does a whole bit about that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You mean people like little girls? <laughs> oh, like uh, just like half an hour later, <laughs> executive producer Dick Wolf. <laughs> just, just confused about everything. Jesus Christ! Yeah, I tend not to watch any Law and Order past like I don't know the year two thousand. Yeah. <laughs> Homicide Life on the Street I watched quite a bit of and it definitely I never saw it. I was I was into a lot of those old cop shows cuz my grandfather was in a lot of those old cop shows. Okay. So it was just just the thing to do uh on a Saturday night was watch fucking reruns of that shit. <laughs> Uh, he was in the movie uh, Gloria in 1999 with Sharon Stone. Uh, he's in the movie Conspiracy Theory in 1997 with Mel Gibson and uh, Julia Roberts. The movie was not good. No, <laughs> not good at all. Um, he's in an episode of NYPD Blue in 1996, and an episode of New York Undercover in 95. It's like a Cagney and Lacey TV movie in 1995 also. <laughs> <clears throat> He's in House 3 in 1989. Oh, just don't. Yeah. I, just one and two. That's it. That's all you need. I don't think I've seen three. I've seen four. Skipped right over three, huh? Well, I think um, 
there was three hard to find. Yeah, I think it's like a Critters Three type of situation yeah. where like it, you just don't find it anywhere. What's um, I want to say like Phantasm Two was impossible to find forever. Oh, really? One of the one of the early Phantasms. It might have been. It was two or three. All right. Yeah. Uh, in an episode of Amen in 1988, uh, an episode of about oh, two episodes of Benson uh, in the early 80s, 82 and 84, killing it on Benson, huh? Yeah, a lot of TV like sitcoms. Uh, Give me a break, 1984, Hill Street Blues, a cop show from the early 80s. It's on four episodes of that. It's on Aftermath in 1983. Ah, uh, yes, horror classic Aftermath. Aftermath, yeah, yes. yeah. Uh, in an episode of the Fame TV series, 1982. Uh, anything else? I mean, I, I like a I like a TV show named after a David Bowie song. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 1973, one of his first roles, The Werewolf of Washington. What? Yeah. <laughs> Never heard of it. Mm. Uh, moving on, Joseph Pilato. Uh, I believe it's this. Got a great workout routine. I just want to check something. <laughs> I'm sorry, this was not his first role. First, okay. I can go back. To I the, just uh, saw some fucking bangers through those credits that yeah, you we'll flipped get, through. We'll get there. We'll get there. God we'll get damn, there. son. Um, some of the more recent notable things, Night of the Living Dead, Darkest Dawn. I think it was like the animated uh, movie they did a couple of years back. He I played, didn't know that was a thing. Holy shit. It's a three point fucking eight. Can't be good. He played Harry Cooper. Uh, you bunch of yo-yos. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Lords of EverQuest. He's a lot of voiceover uh, video game work. Uh, Lords of EverQuest 2003. I never uh, got into EverQuest. Yeah, same here. Like, I, I, when EverQuest 2 went free to play, I started it, and I think I played for maybe two hours. Yeah, no, never played. Uh, does a voice in Might and Magic 9. Uh, does a voice, uh, is the metal Greymon in Digimon. It's like a couple of series there and the movie. Mm. Um, let's see. Music from I, another room. I did watch, I did watch a decent amount of Digimon as a kid. <laughs> that was, that was after, uh, I was aged out of all that. Yeah. Uh, 1997 Star Trek Starfleet Academy video game. It's in Wishmaster in 1997. Wishmaster only has a 5.8. Never saw that. It's fine. <laughs> I think it. I think it lives more in the six six five range. But all right. Uh, he is in thirty six episodes of Beetleborgs. Good God. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he shows up in Pulp Fiction. He's the Dean Martin impersonator at the restaurant uh, that uh, fucking holy Dr. shit. And Uma Thurman go to. Ooh. Jackrabbit Slims. Uh-huh. Uh huh. He has vanilla ice cream and milk. You don't put $5. bourbon in it. You don't put bourbon in it or nothing. <laughs> and like a five dollar milkshake now is That's pretty reasonable. Great. Yeah, That's yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good fucking milkshake. Uh, he's an episode of The Adventures of Briscoe County Junior. Yes. 1993. How can you go wrong with Ash and Shonuff? And Billy Drago. And the Old West. In the Old West. <laughs> uh, he's in the movie Gung Ho in 1986 with Michael Keaton. Great movie. Uh, and, Deserves uh, way more than a 6'3". Yeah. Way more. Yeah, That's yeah. That's pushing an 8. Yeah. Long time since yeah. I've seen that. Uh, he's in an episode of Spencer for Hire in 1985. His first role, Dawn of the Dead, uh, as the officer at the police dock. That was the... Uh, we did that movie. We talked about like when I was watching it. I'm like, I have never fucking seen this scene before. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Where they're at the police dock, uh, like talking to the fucking cops there. Uh, we're gonna move on next yep. up. Get him the fuck out of here. Have Jarlath Conroy. I'm pretty sure I've made a D and D character with that name. Yeah, <laughs> that is definitely like you rolled and got that name. <laughs> fucking. <laughs> He's just like. Fantasy name generator. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he played McDermott in this movie. Uh, as far as anything else notable, he shows up in two episodes of The Nick in 2015. Uh, he was the hypnotist. 
Uh, clench and release. That's got to be a. <laughs> You don't fucking, have to do a porn name for that. It's, yeah. it's a Kegel movie. Oh, yeah, it's a Kegel's instructional video. Uh, <laughs> His name is Sketchy Guy. Sketchy Guy <laughs> in Clench and Release. Uh, he's in a movie called Potzol in 2012. Yikes. Uh, shows up in an episode of uh, Law and Order SVU 2011. He's in the True Grit remake in 2010. I just watched that again recently. It's fine. I enjoyed the fuck out of I that like movie. I like it. I don't... I, mm. I guess I like it more than the John Wayne version, but I mean, it's an iconic John Wayne character. Yeah, Rooster like Cogburn. I mean, they gave that character a sequel. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he does a voice in Grand Theft Auto 4. Uh, he shows up in that fucking horrible Across the Universe movie. You know, I'm going to say it. Grand Theft Auto 4 is better than Grand Theft Auto 5. Fucking fight me. 4 is the one with, like, Nico Bellic. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, cousin, let's go bowling. <laughs> yeah, that does have a much better story, I will say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. Fucking, yeah. You don't get much tracksuit mafia, like, <laughs> fucking centered stuff. Yeah. Uh, he also shows up in an episode of NYPD Blue, 1994. Of well, he's an actor. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He, <laughs> uh, he's in, oh no, it's the TV movie of the Elephant that's, Man. Yeah, We're that's go not the one. Right on by. It's in the movie Heaven's Gate in 1980. This is like one of the most notorious bombs uh, in like Hollywood history. Really? Yep. Huh. Uh, Anthony DeLeo Jr. played Miguel in this movie. Uh, he shows up in some other uh, Romero stuff. Uh, but uh, before we get to that, he's in Lorenzo's Oil with Susan Sarandon, 1992. Bob Roberts with fucking uh, Tim fucking Robbins, uh, 1992. Uh, he is in the remake of Night of the Living Dead. He's the knife zombie. Mm -hmm. uh, he is in Monkey Shines, uh, and his first role is in Night Riders in 1981. There's another Romero uh, property. Oh, was it? I believe so. I think this came up last time when we were talking about Dawn of the Dead. Holy yeah. shit. Written and directed shit. by George Romero. A medieval reenactment troupe struggles to maintain its family-like dynamic mid pressure from local authorities, interest from talent agents, and their king's delusions of grandeur. It sounds like a wacky like comedy. Like It's like... It's amazing. It sounds like a broken <laughs> lizard movie. Yes! Like, yeah, <laughs> it's literally like role models, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, damn! Well, that's coming Is up that too. Peter Weller? No, Ed Harris. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, Tom Savini's in it too. Oh, it's, it's free on Tubi and yeah. Pluto. Well, guess who's watching that? And Slain and Roku. <laughs> uh, we're gonna Crackle move and on. And Plex. Richard Liberty. Old Dick Liberty. That's a porno <laughs> name. Yeah. <laughs> uh, played Logan, uh, or a.k.a. Dr. Frankenstein in this movie. Yep. Uh, some of the other things he was in, Just Cause with Sean Connery in 1995. Flight of the Navigator in 1986. That was a uh, Disney movie. Uh, he shows up in the original Miami Vice. Miami TV Vice! Series. I love Miami Vice! <laughs> Uh, he shows up in Porky's 2 the next day in 1983. Uh, his first role is in The Crazies, the original Crazies in 1973. I've never seen the original version of that, but again, I did like the remake. Mm. I have not seen either one. Uh, Sherman Howard played Bub in this movie. Uh, he's been fucking in a lot of places. Uh, he's still in stuff has something upcoming that was out in 1981. I don't know how that is a thing. Uh, Fuck. Yeah, it shows up an episode of the South Jersey Horror Podcast, which is showing up quite a bit on this podcast. Yeah. Uh, as of lately. Shout out to the South Jersey Horror Podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys are doing something, right? Uh, shows up in that show Blue Bloods for an episode. Oh, that is the ultimate old man fucking TV show. <laughs> uh, the Blacklist uh, shows up an episode of that. Another old man TV show. Uh, does a voice in Star Wars The Old Republic. 
Uh, shows cool, up cool. in an episode of Homeland in 2011. Does a voice in Red Dead Redemption. Fuck yeah. Uh, 2010. Uh, they're doing a remaster of that game, I believe. It's going to be coming out soon. Yeah. Uh, they yeah, probably sold me a copy of that. Yeah. Uh, two episodes of original flavor, Law and Order. Does a voice in the Daxter video game, 2006. Uh, does a voice in the Jade Empire video game, 2005. Shows up in an episode of Malcolm in the Middle in 2004. Uh, shows up in Jack 2, the video game, 2003. Uh, shows up in The Mummy, the TV series, the animated cartoon. Uh, yeah. For one episode. Yeah. <laughs> I remember watching that a little. I mean, I was a fucking senior in high school. I was like, I like that first Mummy movie. Let me check out the cartoon. I did not enjoy that at all. <laughs> it was not good. Yeah. Uh, does a voice in Devil May Cry 2. That was 2003. Uh, Red Faction 2, 2002. Uh, shows up Command and Conquer Renegade 2002. Uh, it, you, did, have you noticed that we cannot go more than five episodes without coming across somebody that's done a voice in Command and Conquer? <laughs> yeah. Or uh, Wing Commander shows up. Yeah, a lot Wing too. Commander's pretty pretty common. Yeah, <laughs> uh, shows up in an episode of Charmed in two thousand two. Uh, more video game voice work: Star Trek Armada two thousand one, Jack and Daxter: The Precursor Legacy two thousand one, uh, another Command and Conquer, uh, an episode of Invader Zim. Uh, all in 2001. This dude knocked it out of the park in two, uh, 2001. He was looking to retire in 2002. I yeah. think that's what it was. <laughs> uh, it shows Fucking up 9 11. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ruined a man's whole career. Goddamn right? Saudis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's getting clipped. <laughs> the Trump 2024 and goddamn Saudi. Those are going together. <laughs> together. I like when something comes together. Uh, shows up in an episode of Star Trek Voyager uh, in 2001. Uh, shows up in an American tale, The Mystery of the Night Monster in 1999. No, thank you. I remember seeing that first one in the fucking movie theater. Uh, I did not. I didn't know. It was well before you were born, I'm going to say. Yeah. I don't know about well before, but... Before I think it was 1984 or 1985. Well, I was born in 85. All right, all right. I didn't know that Five Will Goes West was a sequel. No shit. Yeah. Yeah, no. This Jewish mouse is I also didn't know that The West. Rescuers Down Under was, was a sequel. sequel. <laughs> uh, shows up in six episodes of Batman Beyond. Uh, did some voice work. There. Shows fucking aces. It was an awesome fucking show. Uh, is in the Batman Beyond movie, uh, in the oh, Zorro the Jumanji, cartoon. The Jumanji cartoon as well. Played oh, Van Pelt. Yeah. Jumanji cartoon. 26 episodes of the Zorro cartoon. I don't, I don't recall that one. Yeah, no. Uh, another American Tale sequel, The Treasure of Manhattan Island. Uh, shows up in the Hercules uh, Disney TV series. This guy had a goddamn busy 98. This dude was, yeah, doing all the... Vo like, 98, he's like, all right, this is the year I'm going to retire. Like, something happened in 98. Yeah. All right, 2001, <laughs> that's when I'm really going to retire. Yeah. Something happened then. Uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch, Superman the Animated Series, uh, Men in Black the Animated Series... Uh, oh, good. Extreme Ghostbusters. Extreme Ghostbusters. ER. Uh, Nash Bridges, he shows up in an episode of Pacific Blue, USA. Yes. Network classic TV series. Yes. Uh, two episodes of Walker, Texas Ranger. Did Walker tell him he's got AIDS? <laughs> uh, he does a voice in the Return of the Jedi radio drama in 1996. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, ah. one of the greatest TV series of all time, Renegade, Renegade. in 1996. I really thought you were going to say Murder, She Wrote. I oh, no, no, no. ready to put yeah. buttons. No, no, when we go to Renegade, we've got to get like a motorcycle clip. Yeah, like a or motorcycle just and Renegade. Like, just greasy, like, bro energy, like, noise <laughs> somehow. Uh, I think what you're asking for is uh, a Creed song yeah. on top of a motorcycle noise. And maybe like somebody like spraying like some polo on themselves <laughs> or like... Uh, anyways, in an episode of Home Improvement, 1996. 
uh, Mad About You, Star Trek Deep Space Nine. He's mm-hmm. in Problem Child 3. Never saw past two. Duh, don't. Yeah. Keep keep uh, the streak alive. This dude is all over TV, like in the 90s. Uh, Sliders, Sequest 2032. Man, I can go for a hamburger. Yeah, I can go for several sliders. <laughs> uh, he shows up in a great episode of uh, Seinfeld. Roy. Uh, yeah, the one with the junior mint. Like he the, he's getting surgery, and like Jerry and Kramer go to watch the surgery, and like Kramer has junior mints, and like he's trying to offer them to Jerry during the surgery because they're like it's one of those like theater. Like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like he knocks it out of his hand. Like you see the junior mint go flying into the air and like <laughs> lands inside of him. Junior uh, mint. <laughs> yeah, they're junior. They're minty. They're very refreshing. <laughs> Uh, Melrose Place in two episodes, 1992. Oh, you're going to skip right over Major Dad. Yes. I see how you are. Yeah. He was in the Major Dad for an episode. Just he like was... just like the rest of society. <laughs> Pretend Major Dad never fucking existed. He was Lex Luthor in the Superboy TV series in the 80s. And that went for three years into the 90s. Damn. Jesus. Um, shows up in an episode of Quantum Has... Leap. Has Superman had more TV series than any other superhero? Possibly. I gotta go yes. But yeah, you might be right. Because you had, okay, Superboy. There was, like, well, there was one the like, original, in the 50s. Like, yeah, like the original serials and shit. Yeah. There's the, yeah, the George Reeves one. There's, um, I mean, if you want to count the animated one in the 90s. Superboy. Well, you had like three shows in the '90s to begin with: Superboy, Smallville, Lois and Clark, Lois and Clark. Yeah, there's no way nobody's got anybody's got more than that. Um, and then you have what's the new one? It's not Lois and Clark, but it's like yeah, Superman and Lois. Yeah, which is actually pretty. I watched like the again with all of those like Berlanti shows. First two seasons, really good. And then just like after that, just... Mm. Well, because they probably went, you know, I've got a really good idea for a couple of seasons of a show. Yeah. And then they went like, more, more, gimme. <laughs> uh, uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, 1990. Parker Lewis can't lose. Why the fuck does Next Gen only have an 8.7? <laughs> only an 8.7? Oh, only an 8.7, yeah. I fucking said it. <laughs> Uh, shows up in an episode of ALF in 1990. Also shows up in Baywatch in 89. Shows up in... How the fuck does Freddy's Nightmares have a 6.2? That show is terrible. Yeah, it sucked ass. I don't know if anybody out there has ever watched Freddy's Nightmares or knows what it is or heard us bitch about it before. It's an anthology show a la, you know, Tales, Tales from the, the Dark Side, Crypt, you know, like Twilight Zone. Just like all the interstitial shit is Freddy Krueger. Yeah, he's the crypt keeper, basically. Like, but the fucking show sucked ass. Yeah. Like, ugh. Oh. Uh, he's in Lethal Weapon two in eighty nine. Uh, saw that in the theater with my dad. I was ten. <laughs> um, also shows up in Miami Vice in 89. He's in K-9 with Jim Belushi in uh, 1989. That's probably the best thing he's ever done. K-9, Jim Belushi. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anything else worth mentioning? Shows up in three episodes oh, of the Max Headroom, Max Headroom series. Uh, he also shows up in Tales from the Dark Side for an episode. Uh, his first role, 1963, General Jesus. Hospital. Uh, moving on, Gary Howard Clark. Uh, he played Steel in this Steel. movie. Uh, he was in an episode of Law and Order SVU as well as Original Flavor. Is he Law dead? Order. He's died gotta in be 2020. dead. 2020, he died. He stopped acting in 1999? Yeah. Uh, he's in the movie Hackers in 1995. Only a 6.2. Yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> Uh, he's in Cadillac Man with Robin Williams in 1990. Miami Blues with Alec Baldwin in 1990. Uh, Pink Cadillac with Clint Eastwood in 1989. Uh, he's in the movie Big with Tom Hanks in 1988. Three Men and a Baby in 1987. He's in awesome fucking movies. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Spencer for Hire shows up again in 86. The Equalizer again in 85. Uh, Ryan's Hope shows up again. That's the first time that's ever... That show's ever been mentioned, let alone shown up twice on this show. 
moving on. I don't know. I like a guy that looks like a fucking diesel mechanic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like near and dear to my fucking heart. <laughs> Uh, up next, we have Greg Nicotero, uh, who is most well known, of course, for being a fantastic fucking uh, makeup artist. Yeah. Um, he he's got a signature look. Yeah, he really does. Yeah, yeah. Nicotero zombies, like for sure, like have a look to them. Uh, he yeah did a lot of stuff on The Walking Dead. Most of the makeup effects there also shows up as a walker uh, in a couple of episodes, nine of them uh, to be exact. Uh, he's in a Run the Jewels video in uh, 2021 as a hillbilly. <laughs> hillbilly, yeah. Uh, he's in the movie Piranha 3D in 2010. Ew. He's in Inglorious Bastards in 2009. Gestapo Major, uh, Ginger Dead Man 2. He's in Diary of the Dead. 2007 uh he's in the hills have eyes remake in 2006 i didn't know he acted this much yeah 23 credits he's got uh, as an actor land of the dead 2005 oh he's in that piece of shit werewolf movie <laughs> cursed <laughs> how the fuck does that have a five man pushing dracula's coffin <laughs> uh he's in the house on haunted hill remake in 99 uh he is in fucking from dust till dawn 1996. Uh, he's in Halloween 5, The Revenge of Michael Myers. Blah. Uh, 89. He's in Evil Dead 2. He's the fucking hand. No shit, I didn't know that. I didn't either. Yeah. Holy shit. God damn. Uh, he was also the head. The, 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 the one on the fucking long neck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Long neck peewee head. That sounds like a really creepy, like, dick <laughs> euphemism. Yeah. Show me your long neck peewee head. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Then get in the white van, kid. <laughs> yeah, I'll be your daddy. <laughs> Up next, we have Don Brockett. Uh, he That's is, a fucking name. Yeah. He is probably most well known as Chef Brockett. Uh, in 135 episodes of what? Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Yeah. I fucking... You ever see that documentary about fucking Mr. Rogers? I have never seen a documentary about fucking Mr. Rogers. No, I have not. <laughs> if you ever want to weep, like, uncontrolled... Deep inside, like, Mr. Rogers. Yeah. No, it's all about, like, fucking that. Like, they tried to, like, basically, like, find, like, anything wrong... About like Mr. Rogers and like oh they were looking to see if he was a PB toucher yeah and like basically like, he's one like, of the few cases where like no, no he's a fucking saint he's yeah, yeah. Gen- like a genuinely like like wholesome good person I have not but it I will make you weep like a fucking child I want to say I've passed it and then was like I don't want to cry today yeah so, yeah like, like ugly cry like yeah, yeah I'll, just, I'll save that for when I'm whiskey drunk and I need it <laughs> I will be your neighbor <laughs> I will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's in the movie House Guest with uh, is it the Sinbad movie? Yes, yeah. yes, it is. 1995, uh, Money for Nothing. Is that the fucking? That's not Charlie Sheen. No, that's oh, John Cusack. Yeah. Uh, you know how everybody has like you know every straight dude has a man crush. Yeah. John Cusack. John Cusack. That's mine. He's in some awesome fucking movies. Yeah. Uh, he is gross point blank fucking high fidelity, high fidelity fucking high fidelity is so good yeah that's one of my favorite movies that of is all time. a great fucking movie <laughs> um get your patchouli stank out, out of my, my store, store. <laughs> uh he's also in fucking better off dead one crazy summer yeah like both awesome movies yep uh, this dude is in Hoffa in 1992 with, uh, fucking, uh, is it Nicholson who played Hoffa? Yes. Yeah. 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 And DeVito played his, like, buddy. Uh, up. Look at the fucking mug on him. Yeah. <laughs> How did they make his face that wide? <laughs> Cocaine and makeup, baby. <laughs> Cocaine and makeup. <laughs> Pull it back. Yeah, yeah. Clip it. <laughs> Smack it, flip it, rub it down. <laughs> Uh, Bop it. Twist. <laughs> uh, Bob Roberts shows up again, 1992. 
Uh, I remember I, that coming out, but I don't remember what the fuck it was. Yeah, it was like at that time in my life. Like that's an adult movie. I don't yeah. care what yeah. that's about. Yeah, it's like and not like an adult like in fucking like yeah, adult not movie. not yeah. a good adult movie. Yeah, it's just like when Mona Lisa Smile came out. I was like, why does why do all the moms and aunts in my life want to watch this fucking movie? <laughs> Uh, blood sucking pharaohs in Pittsburgh, nineteen ninety one. Yikes! Uh, the same year he is in Silence of the Lambs. <laughs> it's the friendly psychopath. Oh. <laughs> uh, he's in the Night of the Living Dead remake, uncredited as a zombie. I don't even remember who we're talking about. <laughs> no idea. Don Bro- Don Brockett, the chef on fucking Mister Rogers. Okay, who the fuck was he in this? <laughs> Uh, featured zombie. Oh, okay. Yeah, so probably some dude who got his head cut off or something. Yeah. You're right back there. No, I'm just like, <laughs> he definitely fits the better known as. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a featured zombie. He's better known as a main character on fucking Mr. Mr. Rogers. Rogers. Neighborhood. Uh, last up William Cameron uh, who was again featured zombie featured in this zombie. movie uh, was in the Jean-Claude Van Damme oh, classic in 1985 baby. Sudden Death oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> love me some JCVD <laughs> Fuck. that was like right in that sweet spot too with like double uh, was it double double impact double impact double impact oh. double impact the one with his twin yeah yeah uh-huh. Uh, fucking, you have like blood sport, kickboxer, fucking universal soldier. Like, there was there was a solid ten years where the man made just fucking banger movies. Yeah. Awesome, fucking. I don't give a shit. Awesome, Mindless shitty action. movies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the muscles from Brussels, babe. Hard target. <laughs> was uh, hard target the one where he's being hunted? Yes. Yeah, with Wilford Brimley as his uncle, his yeah. super Cajun <laughs> uncle. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. You don't know that one? <laughs> yeah. I love it already. Yeah, it was, He's got like... The, then it was remade as an Ice T movie in the hood. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> He's got like the fucking like proto mullet in that movie. It's like the mullet that started all mullets. Like, <laughs> it's just like... That's weird. Patient Zero. Yeah, It's yeah. the same hair that Nick Cage had in fucking Con Air. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, but that like, I can picture. Yeah. Sp- like... Poofier, I'm gonna say. A little like, poofier. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Hoffa shows up again. <laughs> to, to, to just gonna skip over the Oksana Bayul movie? Yeah, right over <laughs> it. This drunk Russian chick could skate and drive drunk. Well, she, she couldn't could, drive drunk so hot. She could she, skate like a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. Drunk driving, not, less less skill. Not <laughs> not as talented. Yeah, and that was like around here. She got busted too, wasn't it? Was I don't know. I think it was like in, maybe like in the fucking. I would probably guess Lake Placid. No, it was like down like the Catskills, maybe or something like that. Like Why like south of here? Yeah. What the fuck is she doing in the Catskills? I don't know. Banging Tyson. Like old comedy, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Banging Tyson. <laughs> uh, she was opening for Henny Youngman. Fucking, <laughs> <laughs> is it the remake? Take my wife, please. Please, uh, the remake of Night of the Living Dead in 1990. Uh, oh, God damn it! You see all fucking really? There's two, two more, more in the see all. Yeah, this was his first role. Uh, 1985 is the featured zombie. Jesus Christ. Uh, that will do it for the better known as Onto the Crapshoot. Ah. I love this fucking movie. <laughs> it's, really, it's really it. Like, I, I don't know. There's just, there's movies out of series that just click with you. You know, like, this is mine. Uh. Did you watch anything good this week? That's what I'm thinking about. Um, I really didn't watch anything. Futurama wrapped up, which is a really good ending. Um, what else? What else? I haven't watched the new Continental. I don't know. Eh. Yeah, I thought about watching that the other night. And I... It's fine. I just don't need this. Yeah? Yeah, like, I don't know. I started watching Son of Frankenstein last night. Uh, right. Like with the family, and you know, I was into it and everything. It's just like I've been fucking beat. Someone with a weird, like fucking, uh, like like the constable with the wooden arm, like 
Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah well, he was in... Like, they played up as a joke in, in Young Frankenstein. Bride? But... Why? He was in Bride Frankenstein, wasn't he? Wasn't in The Bride? No, I think it, I think it's in Sun is where he is. Well, no, he is in Sun. Yeah. But I, I could have swore he was in yeah, Bride, remember. too. But they, like, they played up as a joke in, yeah, in Young they Frankenstein. Yeah, because they would, like, turn his hand and then bring it up and then bring it up yeah. again and then put it down. But it's honestly not that far off from, yeah. like, what it is in the movie. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, what is this? <laughs> but then I fell asleep because I'm old and tired. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what did I fall asleep watching the other day? <laughs> it's boiled down to, what did you fall asleep watching this week? Yeah, it was like something I was really like hyped up to watch too, and I'd like, I'd, like, like I wake up and I see credits, like, oh fuck, like yeah. I go uh, back, like, yep. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. Oh, I watched the new. Um, Spin off of the boys, the first episode of that. That oh, was the, pretty good. Uh, Generation V? Gen V, yeah, yeah. That was pretty good. I just can't bring myself to watch it, and I don't know why. It's a really good. I liked the comic. Yeah. Uh, but I, don't, I think for me, the comic was enough, I think. Oh, uh, sure and I didn't really even good. finish the comic. Like, I read the first like 10, 10 issues, and I was yeah. like, okay, I'm good. This is, this is enough. You know, like, you can only watch sperm and blood fly through the fucking air so many times before you're just like, yeah, it's desensitized now. Uh, of course, that's Garth Ennis, right? Like he, Yeah, it's like a he, spoiler alert. You do get to see a shrinking chick, like, literally riding a dude's cock uh, in the first episode <laughs> of the fucking show, yeah. I'm good. I'm so good. <laughs> you know what I really want? In terms of, like... I think we lost our... <laughs> <laughs> in terms of like you know like really whack fucking comics that you can turn into TV shows or movies there's two that stand out to me that th I don't think are ever going to get touched and the first one is Transmetropolitan which would be a oh, fucking God. amazing amazing show <laughs> especially right now right now yeah <laughs> yeah you should have started filming that Two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be great. Or The Filth. Never read The Filth, but I definitely oh, read Oh, I'm going to let you read The Filth. Uh, it, fucking Grant Morrison. Just just right. going ape shit. All right. Yeah. Um, so good. Yeah. They'll, oh, man, you could, fucking Transmetro would be so good. Yeah, they'll never make that. No. That'd be good. That'd be a really cool cartoon. I think you could do a lot with that in a cartoon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> Just things we'll never get. Uh, anything else this week? Uh, oh, fucking Ryan and I went and saw... Oh, the new Expendables. Expendables 4. Was that terrible? Because that looks terrible. It was terrible, but enjoyable. Like, enjoyably terrible. Yeah. Um, You can tell, like, they shot it fucking... Dirt ass cheap. Oh sure. There's like you could tell like most of the movie takes place on like one giant soundstage <laughs> that they just keep like filming different parts of. Yeah. Well, what the fuck? What do you think the budgetary like split is for all the people that are going to be in it? You know. Well, there's only like f five people, like notable people in the movie. It's not like where it was before, where it was like oh really? Every fucking action star ever. Yeah. Well, because that like, was that was awesome twice yeah yeah no this one it's only fucking stallone fucking jason stakums uh fucking randy orton Ugh. yeah it's how like the the drop off is, is real fucking, yeah i saw like 50 cent is in it 50 cent like what the fuck megan fox i'm out yeah yeah <laughs> uh and that's it as like the notable like big stars that's that's a that's a big yikes for me, dog. It, it's mostly like about Jason uh, Taint's gum. <laughs> fucking <laughs> the fucking disrespect. <laughs> I go Stakeums because it's fun and cheeky. <laughs> Taint scum. <laughs> it fits the sound scheme. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of him, also the Meg Two hit uh, HBO Max like today. Oh, I, did I it? Haven't watched it yet? Nah, I'm not gonna until we do an episode because I yeah. no, I don't give a fuck. So we should we should we should say we should do an episode on it soon. If you want me to watch it, we're gonna do an episode on it. 
If you're like, I need to talk to somebody about the fucking Meg 2. I, I want to watch it. <laughs> we should, yeah, we should, probably should save it for an episode. Yeah. <sighs> about that. <laughs> When, when do we schedule it? <laughs> yeah. Well, we schedule. We made our schedule, so we're 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 looking at December, January. That's a January movie. Inevitably, like we're gonna have to shift things around. Yeah. Like this is it's gonna be our first go to. It's gonna it's uh, like it is on deck right now. I mean, it's it's new and it's hot. Like, ish. And it's terrible. It's probably fucking awful. <laughs> I don't wanna. I don't wanna. Uh, let's see. Do we have anything else? I uh, dude, I just I I do not watch TV and at home that much anymore. <laughs> like I go home and I watch YouTube for a little bit, and then I go to bed. And I am checked the fuck out. I am an old man. I listen to podcasts all fucking day at work, though. If you want to watch, or you want to talk about podcasts? I can talk about podcasts. Yeah. Um, I, I, I a finished lot of YouTube and podcasts today. I finished season one of the Haunted Objects podcast with uh, Greg and Dana Newkirk, and that's really fun if you are into like kind of woo woo. Fucking supernatural shit. That that's it's really good. They have a floorboard from the Amityville house. It's awesome. All right. Um, they talk about that kind of shit. Um, really digging uh, Tales from the Break Room, which is a like a listener submitted horror story, and it's all like themed about like things that happen on your way to work, on the way home from work, or at work. It just it's it makes for like a pretty good variety. All right. Especially because it's all like listener submitted. That's really good. Um, what, have, what else have I listened to? Um, I fucking love Small Town Murder. Like, that's that's my go-to. Uh, it's getting to the point where, like, I don't listen to it for, like, a month, and then I love to just binge a shitload of episodes. That's really good. Um, it's just two comedians talking about just hellacious fucking murders that happen in small towns. I think their their criteria is like a a, a town that has less than like 30, 3,500 people living in it or 35,000 people. I don't, I don't right. remember the, the exact number, but whatever constitutes a small town. Uh, <laughs> I listen to that a lot. Uh, there was a... There was a vampire... It was like it was set in the seventies. It's I listen to a lot of audio dramas, but like this one is, um, it's set in the seventies, and it's vampires in New York City. All right. Uh, I think oh, it's called The Lesser Dead. Really, really good. All right. Uh, one of the one of the main one of the main uh, vampires. What the fuck was her name? Uh, she's a fairly famous actress. Uh, um, but that's for another time but i think that's based on a book like they they wrote books in a series and then translated it to an audio podcast that's really good um i don't know yeah i oh i shouted it out on our socials but the the strange tales of virgil virgil Kalock oh yeah yeah really fucking good like that's highly highly recommended if you're into like gothic atmosphere adventure stories all right yeah uh, that might be the spot we wrap it up at, because I have nothing. Yeah, dude, I'm just so fucking boring now. Like, Yeah. I, 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 can't, I hate to keep harping on it, but, like, this fucking overtime shit at work is getting to be, like, soul-crushing. So I go to work, and then I come home, and I just have no energy to even fucking do anything. Yeah, no, I feel, I don't work overtime, but, like, my new job is, like, where... Before my old job, like I just collected a paycheck, basically, like and, and filled a seat. Like I yeah. had like fifteen minutes of work a week, whereas like this is the complete opposite, where like yeah. I have about fifteen minutes of breathing room in a week. Did you kind of take over for that guy that yeah got the axe? Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I no, I didn't. Not officially, because I never relinquished control. Like <laughs> pretty much, like. We actually like they right like the right after he left, they passed out an org chart. And we're on the same fucking level. I thought this guy was supposed to be my boss. Like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit. Why am I reporting to this guy? We're on yeah. the same level on the org chart. Um, but no, like, I, I have noticed that, like, 
I'm having trouble because I'm I'm constantly like focusing on three or four different things at once. Yeah, that, like I'm having trouble focusing on anything anymore. Like on like on one thing at a time. Well, yeah, because you you have fucking brain fatigue. Yeah, like I forget shit a lot now. Like, I mean, like literally, like oh, let me look something up on my phone. Pull out my phone. What the fuck was I looking up? Like, where yeah. am I? What am I? Like, I, it's it's really fucking getting uh-huh. to me. Like, yeah, I just like I, I work a fairly physical job, so it's like my brain is shot and my body is shot. Yeah, I'm no, fucking, I'm the I'm the I work a mental job and my brain is like fried. Yeah, yeah, dude, getting up at five o'clock in the morning every day sucks, dick. Yeah, I, I don't fuck, fuck that shit. <laughs> fuck that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and it's it's like probably gonna go right into November, Ooh. so Ooh. I'm not gonna see the sun for a fucking while. Well, yeah, if you, I mean, not even counting like <laughs> once you get into November, it's gonna be winter, like yeah, and you're just not gonna see the sun in general until about fucking yeah. April. Yeah, <laughs> motherfucker, <laughs> man, I wish I was just independently wealthy. That'd be so good. Yeah. So good. God, I have twelve years to go before I can just collect a pension as a yeah, living. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to live that long. <laughs> Still going to have to go to work though. Twelve <laughs> long <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah, think of all that pension money though. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I will say I'm going to be making a nice chunk of change for sitting on my ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's go depression drink. Yeah. All right. Whoa. Yeah. Damn. I think somebody just tried to fall through your floor. <laughs> um. You ready for socials? Yeah. Yeah. Let's do some socials. All right. As always, our website is never going to change. It's www.bigdumbmonsterspodcast.com, or if you're too lazy for that, www.bigdumbmonsters.com. Different URL, same website. Check it out. Our, our website's definitely never going to change because I just renewed it for like two years. I yeah. Think. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is that what all those GoDaddy emails are about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Three and a half an I, hour. Like, I was curious. I'm like, when is our domain name expiring? Like, I don't want to lose that. And like, yeah. oh, okay. Well, fuck it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Where is uh We are on Facebook. Big Dumb Monsters Pod. Check us out there. We try to post... Fairly often. Um, we got to get in the habit of posting more. Just like dumb bullshit throughout the week. On the Facebook page? Or? All of them. Uh, all of them, yeah. All of them. I, our, our Instagram has gotten better. Yeah. We're up to like maybe like four or five posts in a week, which is good, which yeah. is good for us. Like one, almost once a day. Yeah. I think once a day is probably. Yeah. We got to get better at memes. Get- like horror memes. We need a we need a meme consultant. Like a meme general, yeah. We need a, a memeologist, if you will. <laughs> um, Slasher. We're also on Slasher. Uh, Big Big Dumb Monsters podcast. Uh, that's a great place to be. Um, I almost said we were on Twitter, but we're not. We we, not. we left Twitter before it became X. We were it, yeah. We, we were, were, we watched it become a cesspool. We got and out the game before it was cool to get out the game. Decided it was not for us anymore. Oh, yeah. Um, what else are we on? Steam. We're on we, Steam. Big Dumb Monsters Pod. Nope. Big Dumb Monsters on Steam. Yeah. Uh, you can find us uh, if you're not watching this live stream. If you're listening to us uh, on audio, you can find us on Twitch at Big Dumb Monsters. You can find us on Instagram and Threads at Big Underscore Dumb Underscore Monsters. Uh, we are on YouTube at Big Dumb Monsters. Uh, you should come check out our merch store on Tee Public. Uh, lots of different designs. Prices on Tee Public are like what you should be paying for T-shirts. Like, especially when they have a, a fucking stale, yeah, sale. Yeah, which yeah. they do like I don't know, almost weekly. It seems yeah. like yeah, yeah, weekly, at least once a month. Yeah. Um, so yeah, grab some uh, grab some swag there. Grab okay, a fucking thirteen dollar T shirt. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> we got T shirts. We got banners. We got cups. We got hoodies. Whatever you want, we got it. Um, we don't have any of it. T Public has T Public has it all, but it's got our shit. Our it's got number. our designs on it. Yeah, our shit is all over it. Um, is that it? It's probably it. I think that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Uh. Yeah. 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 I don't yeah. care. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Check out our link tree. Check out our link tree to get all of those things we just told you about. Yeah. <laughs> www.linktr. Dot e e slash big dumb monsters podcast. Is it is podcast in there? Maybe, probably not. Probably. Shit, I think it's just big dumb monsters. Yeah, it's probably just big dumb monsters. Branding, oh. to, yeah, branding talk. I've I went through and like, I've been like, slicing podcast out of like the descriptions of things. I've noticed that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, yeah. we're trying to go all inclusive, going legit. Yeah, yeah. Just big dumb monsters productions, babe. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, we fucking make moves and produce shit. <laughs> <laughs> we do produce shit, shit. Shit. A lot of shit. Yeah. Um, but thank I'm, you for listening and enjoying our shit. Yeah. Might have like specials lined up here and there. Might be doing another episode of the, uh, the show with, uh, with like Nick and the guys from earth world. Oh, rad. Yeah. Uh, I got some other stuff working. Some other yeah. stuff on the, uh, the back burner. Yeah. We definitely have some more stuff in the back burner. Yeah. Mainly shit with that uh, producer guy over there. This guy? <laughs> it's been yeah. back burning the whole show, folks. Yep, yep, yep. yep. <laughs> that feller. Um, yeah, let's get out of here. All right. Uh, yeah, if you know us, you know where we're headed. <laughs> <laughs> but now for our weekly words of wisdom. Do not. Like ghoulies eat your ass. And never sleep in a deathbed. Bye-bye. Damn, that was cool. All Fonzie-like.